<sighs> Witch Hunt is a first-person open-world horror game set in the 1700s where you're tasked with hunting down dangerous mythical beings. Atmosphere. Whilst the town is eerily quiet, the forest feels intimidating. The map is very large and it's easy to get lost and disorientated. The draw distance and thickness of the trees make it very easy for you to get ambushed by enemies that roam through them. It gives off a feeling that you're somewhere that you shouldn't be. You really don't know what any of the enemies are capable of until you engage with them, or even what's out there. There's a lot of mysterious and supernatural things that roam about the wilderness and yet again none of it is explained to you, making every interaction feel like you're dabbling in things you don't understand. The sound of a heartbeat plays when your target is in the area, and it has the ability to put you on edge immediately. To even the odds, you have the ability to see through the beast's eyes for a brief moment which you'll spend trying to figure out where it is and if it can see you. It makes sense the feeling I felt most during the game was fear of the unknown and apprehension for what lies ahead. That's one Harry Mason. Scares Encountering each enemy is pretty frightening. Most enemies hit hard and don't go down easily. The gun takes a long time to reload and you'll be mauled to death before you can reload it. If you can't think quick enough, you'll die. This goes for most of the other enemies you'll come across. Meeting the beast or the witch is usually a frantic encounter, trying to deal enough damage to it before it kills you. There's a lot of enemies that use jump scares and anonymous sounds like the whispering shadows that make a beeline for you the second you get too close, flashing up faces on the screen and draining your magic power. <sighs> While some scares are cheaper than others, the combat in itself, which is a large majority of the game, can be totally nerve-wracking and brutal. That's two Harry Masons. Sound design. There's some very light ambience that's almost indistinguishable from the sound of wind. Parts of me thinks it's a bit too subtle, but it does work well enough to give the game a creepy, eerie feel. The monsters make all their own, easily identifiable sounds so you can tell when they're in the area, and I really like a lot of the sound effects for the whispering shadows and most of the unnatural events. There's random whispering in places which often cause me to stop in my tracks and listen. The voice acting is a bit cheesy, but it's so rare that it doesn't really matter. There's a lot of good stuff here. That's three Harry Masons. Gore. Whilst blood spurts out of monsters when you shoot them, the level of light doesn't make it very noticeable amongst the grey and brown of the trees. You don't really encounter anything gory very often, which I think is okay. Whatever you do encounter could have been more impactful by having some more disturbing scenes than what's available. That's still three Harry Masons. Story. There's not a lot of explanation for what's taking place. Your backstory is just some text at the start that states monsters attacked your family when you were younger and you devoted your life to slaying beasts. You heard the town of Belleville is under threat and you turn up to defeat it. It's a bit of a shame there's not much context for things during the gameplay. There's a few bits of environmental storytelling but it's a bit ambiguous and it would be nice to have some genuine backstory. Back in the final score 3 out of 5 Harry Masons. Whilst the early game is a lot more frightening than the later game once you learn how the enemies work, it never really stops being creepy. I'd say the biggest downfall of the game is also one of its strengths. Whilst the map is very large and makes exploration a lot of fun, it also makes tracking down the beast who's always moving a difficult challenge. Even with the beast sight, if it isn't anywhere recognisable, then you've wasted your time and you'll be meandering for a while. Again, I'd like to remind you this whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games. If you don't share his opinion, that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I covered with fear the first time the beast proximity alarm sounded, I did not scream like a banshee or run away from the computer, and I advise you don't either. There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. Most go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.